Well, that didn't work. Let's get started. In my last video, I was talking about how my firewall was dropping internet um, service in my house. And after some initial troubleshooting, I figured out that it was my firewall that was causing a problem. I took it apart, uh, changed the network card, thinking that that might be the issue. Uh, and in doing so, I noticed that there was a blown capacitor on the motherboard. I went ahead and uh, continued with that reconfiguration put the uh, firewall back in service and tried it again and sure enough it failed again. Uh, so now I'm thinking that that blown capacitor is uh, what's causing the issue um, and even if it isn't this computer has been in service for probably three years now and I think it's time for an upgrade. Upgrading my firewall actually means a couple of different projects here uh, which I'll be documenting and then putting up on the channel. Um, I do not have a separate box now for the new firewall that I'm going to be building. I'm actually going to be putting together a new server altogether using um, some old hardware that I have laying around. Uh, primarily I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the internals of my Windows home server and that's going to be the basis for the, um, the new firewall. Now you might be asking well what about your home server? Well. Uh, over the holidays uh, we upgraded a couple of machines and we introduced a Windows 8 laptop uh, which my oldest daughter now has and Windows 8 does not play well with the version of Windows Home Server that I have so what I'm gonna do and I actually have been researching this for a little while is I'm going to be replacing Windows Home Server with Windows uh, Server 2012 Essentials um, and I've got some other hardware that I'm gonna be using to build that um, and then I'll document that in another video and I'll show you what I got there because I've got some cool stuff there too. Uh, but in this video I'm going to build the new firewall server and I'll hopefully get it configured and reintroduced into my, uh, my network here. Okay, here's everything on the workbench. I've taken my uh, home server out of the rack. Uh, this is an RSV R4000 uh, Rosewill server case. I feature that in a handful of videos. And on top here are the two network cards that I'm going to be using. Um, these are gigabit cards made by Netgear, uh, GA311s. And this case here is uh, uh, an Antec 300 uh, mid-tower case. I've had this case for a long time. In fact, this was actually the original uh, case for my home server. Uh, when I put my home server um, together originally like three years ago. Uh, this used to be upstairs in my office with my home server and then um, actually my first set of videos for this channel was actually inspired by moving my home server out of this case into a rack mounted case. So uh, we've kind of come full circle here. Uh, the reason why I have this is this is going to be the temporary home for uh, the network cards and all of the internals here uh, for my firewall. I've got a server case on order that should be here in a couple of days uh, but I need internet now so I'm going to use this temporarily and when the other stuff comes in then I'll do uh, uh, another transfer, hopefully the final transfer of all this stuff uh, into the new case. But for now this is just going to have to do. If you remember, these Netgear cards were actually installed in the original firewall, uh, but they didn't have these brackets because they wouldn't fit. Um, they are not going to have a problem being installed in the Antec case, but the server chassis that I bought that's um, going to be delivered hopefully in the next few days uh, is 2U uh, in size, and these are not going to be able to be installed as is. I'm going to see if I can find some uh, half-height brackets um, and if I can't, then maybe what I will do is try and cut these down and um, uh, use them that way because I don't know if I want to install them without the bracket in the uh, final box there. Home server is taken apart and I pulled the motherboard. This actually was featured in my very first video to the channel. It's an Asus M4A78-EM and this is an AMD Athlon X3 435 got four gigs of memory 
and uh, overall this thing has just been rock solid since I've uh, purchased it and started using it for my home server. Here's all the hardware that's going in the firewall. This is the motherboard and processors I just showed you. A pair of Netgear Gigabit NICs. I have two 80 gig uh, SATA drives and that, that's going to be used for the, uh, the software. Uh, I have two of them because I'm going to put them in RAID 1 so I have some redundancy and I'm going to be using the RAID capability of the motherboard. A DVD RW for loading the software and then I have this uh, power supply which is a 250 watt power supply that came out of that uh, virtual server that I built a while back. Uh, this is temporary. The uh, server chassis that I ordered, um, I also ordered with that uh, a power supply that's appropriate for that uh, server chassis. So I'm going to stick all of this in that Antec 300 case for right now and then I'll get everything configured. I guess I should also talk about the software that I'm going to be using. Uh, I downloaded and burned a copy of ClearOS Community version 6.3.0. My uh, current firewall is using ClearOS version 5.1 so there's definitely been uh, some updates since I started using that. Um, this is a Linux based uh, uh, firewall that you can get for free. Uh, I've had great success with uh, version 5.1, never had any issues with it, uh, and I'm excited to try version 6.3. Now, uh, if I have any issues using this, I can always go back to version 5.1 or 5.2, which I think is the most current version of that of that build, um, and because uh, I know that works. Uh, um, this is my first experience using this, but I figured I'd give it a try because it's the most current uh, rev of ClearOS. I've got the motherboard in place inside this uh, Antec 300 case, which, by the way, is a really nice uh, budget case to use for builds. Uh, nice rounded corners, you've got a couple of nice fans and some other uh, really nice options. And I ran into a problem, uh, like I always seem to do on these kind of projects. Um, motherboard fits in fine, that's no issue. The problem that I have actually is the power supply that I'm using right now um, temporarily. The cables aren't long enough um, <laughs> to reach the uh, motherboard power here and the 4 pin connector over here. So what I'm going to do is pull all this stuff out and use something else. I'll show you that in just a second. That sound you hear in the background is uh, actually my furnace. As you guys uh, might remember, my workbench is underneath the stairs uh, going down to my basement, uh, right on the other side of my furnace and my water heater. And uh, in the wintertime, which is where we are right now, uh, my furnace kicks in to heat my house, and it is a lot louder and a lot more annoying when I'm trying to make a video. So I end up waiting for the fan to run uh, and finish running, I should say. And then I rush to try and uh, film all the stuff that I need to for the projects that I'm working on. Um, so I'm in that period right now, so I'm waiting. And uh, hopefully the fan will shut off in just a minute. And uh, then I can get back to showing you uh, this guy. Okay, now I can hear myself, so that's good. Uh, while that furnace fan was running, I actually pulled out all the stuff inside of here because I'm going to use that for another project. Um, this empty shell is what's left of the Asus Essentio PC. Uh, a few videos ago I uh, turned this into a virtual server that I used for a little bit. And even before that this was my wife's uh, original computer. And then of course I have the uh, video series where I upgraded my wife's computer altogether. I'm going to repurpose this a third time now as the temporary house for the firewall that I'm trying to build in this video. Uh, you can tell that this is a lot smaller than the Antec case. Uh, the power supply I actually pulled out of here. Um, so I'm going to move all of this stuff in here and I shouldn't have any issues with the uh, cord length so that should be okay. And then I'll get you know uh, another use out of this thing and that's sort of the beauty of recycling some of this technology. Um, you know I, I have enough space to keep this stuff and uh, you know here's just another example of being able to you know use it again and you know it just sort of comes in handy took a few minutes but finally got everything in the case. Uh, it is a little bit tight but that's okay. Next step is to install the software and configure it and then finally get the uh, new firewall in service but I think for now we're gonna call it uh, call it done at least for this video. This is gonna be cut in uh, the middle of the last part of the video here because I just realized that 
probably would have been a good idea to show this to you guys. I uh, have everything plugged in and powered up and it booted with no issue. And what I'm doing right now is I'm using one of my favorite utilities called Darix Boot and Nuke. Uh, it's a piece of software that will do a secure wipe of uh, hard drives. And I'd like to do this in this situation because I want to be absolutely sure that the hard drives that I'm using are clean and don't have any uh, residual files or anything at all. Um, it's just something that I like to do, uh, start from a clean slate, especially when I'm going to do the install of the software. So this will take a little bit, and once this is complete, I actually do the install of ClearOS. Now back to our regularly scheduled ending of the video, I guess. Definitely follow me on Twitter. You'll get updates on when new videos are posted as well as some high quality tweets from me. Uh, subscribe and like. Uh, it's always helpful for me. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.